Marmite's Cheryl is hitting the markets. And this is David Leach, Marmite's export manager. And what do they find gathering dust on the shelves? Not actually a dissimilar price to the UK, so it's about 60, 70 feet more than the UK. The great thing is, seeing it here just shows that there is demand for the product. Yeah. If there's no demand... It wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be here. It's not a luxury good, but it's certainly a relatively premium good. It's not something you'd have in your weekly shop, but that's similar in the UK. But it's the entry price, so it's a big outlay of money to, to try something. Once I've bought it, all right, it's quite cheap to use, but if I don't like it, then that money's wasted. So that is, that is definitely one of our challenges over the next week, is to understand that. But who's buying it? Is it just the odd expat hankering for a taste of blighty? Or is it the Indians keen to have a bit of spread on their toast? Only one way to find out. Bring on a taste test. Do you want to try and try this for us? What do you think, good or bad? Hey, yeah. hey. We got, we what got, about the rest? We, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Another one? No. Uh, so not that good. <laughs> All right, one's enough. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Nice. I, I hey. think you're too nice to us. <laughs> this is the problem with the consumer groups. No one will ever say, this is horrible. So they sit there and go, oh, yeah, I'm sure you can see a use for this. And you're like, but you think it's horrible, but you won't say it. So far, we've eaten most of it ourselves. Yeah, I know. Let's go and find more. Guys, guys. Oh, not. At last, Cheryl gets a marketing insight she can actually use. No? Oh. <laughs> they hate it. Eat. Ah! <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. And just to finish it off, that's what he thinks. <laughs> From where I'm standing, it looks like Marmite's going to be a tough sell. It's a no. Cheryl's got to change the eating habits of a whole nation. You can't give it away. I'm desperately trying to catch up with Nick and Jar's English from Brevent Watches, and my biggest concern is the cost of launching a new brand here in India. How would you compare your sort of advertising, PR, marketing budget? compared to some of the successful uh, brands. What we decided very early on is we cannot compete on a level playing field. We decided very early on to sort of focus on PR. Right. The thing that was very important for us as a brand was to get the story out there. And um, when a business is based around your passion, you have to go and see the person selling the watch. It's no good just sending a salesman to just say, look, these guys produce, well, we as a company produce beautiful watches. They want to see it from you as well. It's about you two, and it's about your passion, your drive, your ambition and being hands-on running the business. How are you going to do that when you're actually that much bigger? It's difficult. Part of the whole plan is to make sure we have fewer shops turning over more watches, so we'll put extra effort into fewer shops. Whether it's one shop or a thousand, you've got no chance of selling anything unless there's a demand for it. So Nick and Jars have come to meet a Mumbai PR guru to see if he thinks he can make the Bremer brand work in India where your brand fits in. This is the right time to come in. Why is that? This is the perfect time because uh, I think we're ready for more brands to come in. But the numbers of watch sales are still very small in India in, in, in real terms. So it's okay. when is that really going to change? And that's something that we're trying to figure out this week. But um... It's just started growing. It's, I think, barely been about two years. I know that there was nothing beyond a Rolex once upon a time. You know, anybody would go out and buy a Rolex. But now people want something exclusive, something which the other person's not wearing. And that's luxury, right? Well, that's the definition of luxury, yeah. isn't it? It's something which is something exclusive. slightly hard yeah. to get and something which is yeah. uh, normally... Very Extremely cheap. aspirational. Yeah. Like, now I know I can sell this. Everything sounds brilliant until the boys explain their big PR idea. They want to persuade the Indian Air Force display team, their equivalent to our Red Arrows, to wear the Bremont watch. A cunning plan, but will it work in India? Our latest watch will be worn by the Indian Air Force, the Syracuse Air Display Team, and we have a. Um, Are they big out here? The, I mean, from your, do you, uh, as a little boy, do you grow up in the UK? You grow up. Uh, Wanted to fly with the red arrows. Throwing the red arrows, which are the, the formation of nine airplanes over here. You have the um, Indian Air Force and the. Well, yeah. Then, then again, just for a little boy, if you <laughs> look at your target audience, I don't think that will reach them at all. Now, this fella is not pulling his punches. It seems to be quite a good tie-up, but do you think it might not be, or...? No. You don't think it's aspirational enough? No, not at all. They will be completely different. They'll have to be a celebrity roped in or something. Do you think, you think the celebrity thing yeah. is the way...? 
Yeah. Our budgets, unfortunately, probably don't stretch to a lot of the people. And, and, and it's not really what we're about. Right. Um, no, obviously. It sounds like it's time for the boys to pull the ejector cord and yeah. come up with a brand new You're plan. This is Bill and Kevin's first trip to India, and if it's not hard enough for them to try and sell their diesel converter, they're also going to have to find oil. Lots of it. For me, it's very important. We're still trying to understand the full logistics of the supply chain and the economics of how we can get these oils to market and compete versus the fossil fuel-based diesel. Yeah, we are convinced it makes sense, but we need to understand and understand the full logistics behind it. Founder Mike is certainly convinced. He's already formed a partnership with an outfit called CleanStar, based in central India. Their job is to find the green plant oil they need. You don't have to travel too far in India to see dirty diesel is big here. And it's not just the vehicles that are belching it out. Because India's electricity supply is so unreliable, there's thousands of backup generators. They also use diesel. All these towers have to run on generator sets because there's electricity just for a few hours a day. And the diesel comes from really far away. So if we can take the oil that we're making just a kilometer away from here, process it, put the Regina Tech kit on this gen set, we have a solution that's completely local and that benefits the local people. So the potential market for Regina Tech's diesel converter and greener plant oil is massive. At their research site, CleanStar have been experimenting with the best way to grow the trees that produce the fruit that gives us the plant oil. And this baby is one of them. The Jatropha tree. The seeds are crushed and the oil produced. If we can find the conditions where growing directly from seeds uh, can be successful, then, then that opens up a whole new set of possibilities for where we can grow Jatropha. What it really brings home is the very large amount of labour that's going to be required in order to harvest these seeds and produce the oil. Getting oil from local farmers might seem a good idea, but you know what? Good ideas don't grow on trees. I've lost loads of money finding that one out. So, is Regenitech one of those good ideas? You also use it for spreading on sandwiches. Unilever's Indian partner, Hindustan Lever, have already passed on the chance to sell Marmite. It's starting to look as if that was a good call, because so far, no one seems to like it. But Cheryl and David aren't about to give up quite yet. So we're, we're looking at middle to upper middle class mums cooking for the family with kids. Family means everything to mm -hmm. her. Everything that she does for her kids, for her husband, what society thinks of it, that's of the paramount importance to her. So cooking is part of their own self-esteem. The food they produce is the same yeah, on how yeah. good they are as well. Yeah, because uh, that's what they see the, the, the role is. Yeah. I'm that glad he said that, not me. That. At least now she's got an angle. Health. But will the Indians swallow it? Cheryl arranges a proper focus group complete with video cameras and translator so she can eavesdrop on her target audience of Indian mums. They're going to absolutely hate it. It's got a slight bitter taste. She's right. It's a strange sort of smell. It's not an attractive smell. Children won't eat this. You feel like you're eating medicine, you know? You really have to tell yourself you're eating medicine when you eat this. So here's the problem. It's good for you, but everyone still hates it. But health is definitely on the Indian radar. And today, more than us, the kids are health conscious. They're very mm. particular mm, that's what we saw about yesterday, wasn't keeping totally. their Physique kids are really health conscious. In good shape. My daughter keeps jumping because she wants yeah. to keep uh, fit. She says, Mom, why are you <coughs> adding so much ghee that's clarified butter on the food? Put yeah, less cream are. in the food. My son says that... He I think I can hear the sound of the penny dropping. There's some sort of line in my head around um, all good cooks love Marmite. So can you encompass the fact that if you're a good cook, you will love Marmite and almost make people want to love Marmite because it will show they're a good cook. And giving your kids healthy food was so, so important. So all healthy cooks love Marmite. So it's dead easy. All Cheryl has to do now is persuade all these healthy cooks to use an ingredient they can't stand. The English brothers, Nick and Giles, are also doing some market research. 
I like the bamboo look. Is there a market for these very English watches here in India? Morning. Jars English. Come, Nick. They've come to check the opposition. It's OK if we have a look around and just see, see what you've got? It's quite a fashion store. The, the brands here, for us, we, we normally look at what brands we're going to sit next to, and that's very important for us, is to, to be along a similar level of brands. And here, the sort of Ted Bakers, the Fossil, they're generally more of a fashion brand watch and lower price point. So, you know, on first impressions, it's not our type of store, but they do have tag here on a, on a small level. But um, it's interesting to know what volumes of watches they, they do. But what they find is a whole load of gold-plated, cheap fashion watches. Bremont are stainless steel, heavy and very expensive. But how much in rupees? This is horrible. So they sit there and go, oh, yeah, I'm sure you can see a use for this. And you're like, but you think it's horrible, but you won't say it. So far, we've eaten most of it ourselves. Yeah, I know. Let's go and find more. Guys, guys. No, they're not. At last, mm -hmm. Cheryl gets a marketing insight she can actually use. No? No. <laughs> they hate it. Eat. Ah! <laughs> in your weekly shop, but that's similar in the UK. But it's the entry price, so... It's a big outlay of money to, to try something. Once I bought it, all right, it's quite cheap to use, but if I don't like it, then that money's wasted. So that is, that is definitely one of our challenges over the next week, is to understand that. But who's buying it? Is it just the odd expat hankering for a taste of blighty? Or is it the Indians keen to have a bit of spread on it? Marmite's Cheryl is hitting the markets, and this is David Leach, Marmite's export manager. And what do they find gathering dust on the shelves? Not actually a dissimilar price to the UK, so it's about 60 70 feet more than the UK. The great thing is, seeing it here just shows that there is demand for the product. Yeah. If there's no demand... It wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be here. It's not a luxury good, but it's certainly a relatively premium good. It's not something you'd have... And they're toast. Only one way to find out. Bring on a taste test. Do you want to try and try this for us? What do you think? Good or bad? Hey! Yeah. hey. We got, we what about got, the rest? We, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Another one. Uh, so not that good. <laughs> uh, one's enough. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. It's good. Nice. Hi, hi. Hey. You're too nice to us. <laughs> this is the problem with the consumer groups. No one will ever say. <laughs> and that is brilliant. And just to finish it off. Oh, that's <laughs> From where I'm standing, it looks like Marmite's going to be a tough sell. So no. Cheryl's got to change the eating Why? habits of a whole nation. You can't give it away. I'm desperately trying to catch up with Nick and Jar's English from Bremont Watches, and my biggest concern is.